Today's video brings us to the steel city of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and today we're going to do what I'm calling the people of Pittsburgh and city life. I'm shooting with my Nikon D5600. Currently attached is my 18 to 140 lens. I also did bring my 85 millimeter prime lens. I'm going to be shooting on aperture priority. So if you're ready, grab your camera and let's capture some moments. So I would like to share a few tips with you. First being, whether you shoot with a smartphone or a real camera, composition is one of the most important things. The way you compose a shot can really tell a story because anyone could just get a camera and take a picture. But if you compose it in a way that gives it a whole new look, a whole new life, it's gonna stand out from the rest. So practice composition, get creative, and it'll make your photo pop that much more regardless of your skill of photography. The second thing I want to mention is depending on the subject, I often shoot three different shots with three different exposures. Now, being an aperture priority, I can control the exposure either with the shutter speed or the ISO. But sometimes I underexpose it to give it a more dramatic look. Sometimes I overexpose it to make it pop a little bit. There we got this nice colorful alleyway, strawberry way. I do give my photos a brief edit as well. Nothing dramatic, nothing crazy, but I do retouch them upon sharing them as the final result. Well, here we go, we got some colorful tulips here. And sometimes opportunities just present themselves. We've got some pigeons here. That's if they let us get close enough. <laughs> Thankfully, we do have a zoom lens, so we could get pretty close here. It's actually a pretty nice shot right there. So we got this fountain here with multiple opportunities. We could try to get it with the building in the background. We got flowers around it. I'm gonna go for a couple of different ones here. I'm gonna get one down low to the ground. The building in the background. I'm gonna bring that in a little bit tighter actually. Going for between the water, I'm going to focus on the building in the background, recompose it. There we go. I'm going to put a flower in the picture here. Oh, right in front of us, we've got a building. William Penn Hotel. Get a little bit more here. I want to get some of the leaves in the foreground here. Give us some depth. Kind of like we're peeking behind the trees here.
So right here, this section of flowers is a lot of yellows. I'm gonna do a color pop on just the yellows. We're gonna do the business sign across the street. It says tap room. And we're gonna use the flowers as the foreground. And like city life, you have to wait for the opportunity to present itself once the traffic goes by. We've got a gentleman walking too. We're gonna to get them both at once here. little water feature here and I think we can get some cool shots of this so let's see here so right here I'm gonna focus on the closest fountain head recompose it wait for the car to pass by and there we go We got a good opportunity here. There's a gentleman power washing up there on the cherry picker. We're gonna use our zoom for this one. So here at the old jail, we got this gorgeous archway. And I'm gonna Try to capture it, get a break in the action here. So I'm going to compose this one with the archway and the tower behind it. Got a pretty nice fountain here. I think this will make for a good opportunity. We also got the flags in the background. I'm going to try to compose this just so. I got the stanchion out of the way here. There we go. Opportunity presents itself here. Since it's drizzling out, I'm taking advantage of this bus stop here. I did switch to my 85 millimeter lens, prime lens. And when I say prime, that means it's fixed to 85. You can't zoom it. But the good thing about this lens, it has an aperture of 1.8, which is great for low light and for giving you that shallow depth of field, a blurry background. We're going to use that right now for this clock here. I'm going to bring that down even a little bit more. Get a nice blurry background. There go, nice clean shot. Get this row of traffic here. Something we're going to focus on here is this uh, fire hydrant.
Now here we could get an interesting shot. We got some people down there and these little flower boxes. So I think I'm gonna get some focus on the flowers and have the people a little bit blurred out in the background here. I'm gonna raise the aperture a little bit. I don't want it super blurred. I did two different shots, one with the flowers blurred out and one with the people blurred out. I got these lion heads right here. I'm gonna focus on the closest one, recompose it with the other one in the background. I'm gonna wait for that gentleman to get out of the way. Here's another unique shot we could get. We got these rental bikes and they're all lined up in a row. So depending on how I want to do it, I can either get all the wheels or handlebars straight in a row or I could get a shot down the middle. I think I'm going to go for both here. So let's see what it looks like here. Try another one with the wheels here. Yeah, the wheel one looks pretty good. Now I'm gonna get a shot down in between all of them here. I'm gonna pick one in the middle to focus on. And it's gonna give us some blurriness before and after. I'm gonna get a closer one in focus here. Yeah, pretty good. Cool perspective. Right here we have this dapper looking gentleman statue and here we can get a couple different shots we can get a side profile which i'm going to try to do right here sun's showing on him so the lighting's pretty good i do like that one and i want to get one kind of down low looking at us Nice blurry background, really makes him pop. Now with this 85 millimeter prime lens and the low aperture with these purple flowers, we're gonna do a, a color pop here. You get a nice in focus section here. There we go. 
now at the famous Point State Park. I did switch back to my 18 to 140. I want to be able to have the combination of wide and zoomed in. And up ahead, if you can see, we've got a, a blowing flag. I want to capture that in mid-motion. And we got American flag, POW flag right there. And try to capture it. It's always tricky to try to get it just at the right moment. Ah, come on, flags, work with me here. Need them to be opened up so we can see them both. Sometimes it's a waiting game. There we go. So we're under this overpass here and got this railing. And I figure something we could do is maybe get a shot following the lines of the railing towards the distance. Now, if we could time this right, we do have an, a train passing by. We've got the bridge, we've got traffic coming towards us. I like to try to capture the bridge with the train and traffic in motion. The train is almost going to be ending, so I'm going to take a couple shots here. Now a more effective shot is if we use some of these pinks and purples as our foreground for the bridge. And it's going to require me kind of getting up here like this and let's see what we can come up with here. I'm going to zoom in a bit. We can even do like a peeking through kind of shot. That actually may work out quite nice. I'm going to zoom on the bridge, focus on the bridge I should say. Got the flowers above and below. Let's see how that looks. That's actually a, a really nice shot. Now on the flip side, we could actually focus on the flowers and have the bridge blurred out behind it, just to show you a comparison. So we have same shot, two different looks, tells two different stories. So. That worked out quite nice. That's why I mentioned that creativity goes a long way. You could get the same general shot and make it look completely different, either based on the focus, the composition, the exposure. And that's what I love about photography is the full creativity that you have. So that's why it never hurts to experiment. Even if you make a mistake, it could be a good mistake. Like. Bob Ross says, there's no mistakes, just happy accidents. I think that applies for photography as well. The main reason I came here to Point State Park is because of the fountain, which is not working. I never seem to time these right. But if it was operating, it would offer some spectacular photo opportunities because the fountain would be right ahead of you. Got the city backdrop, especially at nighttime too. The fountain is illuminated, the buildings are illuminated. You can get some incredible shots here, both of the city backdrop, the bridges, but it's not a complete loss because as we look, right there is the Duquesne Incline, which is currently going up. So we're going to try to get some shots of that in action. We're going to do a couple here, one in climbing the ascents, and we're going to do one right where they meet to see if we can get them passing right by each other. And if we wait it out, we'll be able to get the upper one arriving at the station, which resembles almost like a haunted house. It's got a very unique look to it. 
This is the confluence of the three rivers. Off to our left is the Monongahela. To the right is Allegheny, which forms the Ohio. Come the right time of year, you'll get boat traffic, barges. We do have the submarine across there, which is the Carnegie Science Center. Former Heinz Stadium, which is now Akershire Stadium. I still call it Heinz Field. And summertime, this place will be loaded with people. Great photo opportunities for people in action. Boats, people fishing, biking. So, if you come the right time of year to Point State Park and you want to get some pictures, you won't be disappointed. Looking across here at Heinz Field on the shoreline, I do see four inflatable boats. I'm going to get a shot of that. I'm going to focus on them, recompose it with the sign above it. I'm going to bring the exposure down a little bit there, a little too bright. Another thing I do is I do shoot in JPEG. You do have the options, at least with these cameras, of shooting in RAW or JPEG. Now, RAW is basically a raw photo where you have complete control over editing in a good editor software or program. I shoot in JPEG, which is a little bit simplified. You can't have as much control over editing, but as long as you control the shot in the camera, you don't have to do a whole lot of editing afterwards. So it's a lot less work, at least in my opinion. So JPEG is how I shoot. Oh, speak of the devil, we have a boat. This is going to make for a couple of opportunities here. Another thing with photography is patience is key. All right, I may actually maybe I'll get these people taking the picture of the boat. Rivers of Steel, the Explorer. I'll get that with the uh, Duquesne behind it. That's actually probably my favorite shot. I got that lined up perfectly with the upper balconies of Heinz Field. Another example that you could get all different shots, capture different moments, all within seconds of each other. I'm seeing one more opportunity here. The boat's going to be passing under the bridge. We're going to see if we could capture that at the right moment. Hence why I say capture the moment and see how it looks. I'm going to get a nice tight shot here. more here. Make sure the boat's in focus. I'm going to recompose it. One more. There we go. Those of you still watching, I want to take a moment to talk to you guys. So, first off, if you're here, thank you for being here on my new channel, JP Photography. And this is obviously a new channel. This is my only my second video, my first photo walk for this channel. But I'm going to be asking for your feedback on a couple different things. So, number one is the length of the videos. Photo walks could, I could make them be anywhere from 10 minutes to 30 minutes, if not longer. It all depends on how many photos I want to take, how much time I want to spend. And I don't want to bore you guys, but I also don't want to make it too short. So obviously I can't please everyone, but if I could get a good consensus as to if you'd like either shorter or longer, it wouldn't be anything over 30 to 40 minutes, I can tell you that. 
but it wouldn't be less than 10 minutes. But I think, in my opinion, I'd rather do a little bit longer just to make it an enjoyable, relaxing video because that's what we're doing is going around having a relaxing time capturing the moments. And for me, I enjoy doing it. I'm already out here a couple hours now and time just flew by like that. So that's the first thing I want to ask for your, is your feedback on the length or duration of the video. Secondly, I want to mention that this camera, the D5600, by no means is a professional camera. This is a beginner to mid-level entry camera. The reason I purchased it is for a few reasons. Number one, it's got the full articulating screen so I can actually compose myself if I want to do selfies or for videography. It's very user friendly. It's got a touch screen. So if you're transitioning from smartphones to this camera, it's very similar where you could just use live view, touch to focus. You can even touch to take the photo as well. So really user friendly, but it also has capabilities for some stunner, stellar looking photos. A lot of it is dependent on lenses. You could buy this as a kit where it comes with the body and an 18 to 55 lens. That's a great starter kit. I opted just to get the body and I bought my own lenses. This is the 18 to 140, which is one of my favorite go-to lenses. It handles almost every situation. I also have an 85 prime and a 35 prime. So if you would like more information on the lenses I use and the settings on the camera and just to get a better know-how or feel for the equipment I'm using, feel free to let me know. I could definitely make a dedicated video for the lenses, talking a little bit more about them, giving examples of photos as to how they perform and even as far as the camera there's different shooting modes on cameras like this everywhere from auto to full manual and different things in between I shot everything on aperture priority now that may sound like you know a whole nother language to you guys if you're not familiar with the photography world or camera settings so again if you would like to learn more about that stuff I'm willing to do so I'm definitely on board or making short or small tutorials I'm not a professional but I know enough to at least get by and I can explain it in a way that's very simple and easy to understand. So with that being said, I had a great time here in the Steel City capturing the people of the city and city life. And there's a lot of photos I didn't share because obviously they're not all gonna be winners. When you take photos, you're gonna have some good, some not so good, whether it's out of focus, over or underexposed, or it just doesn't look good. It just looks like an ordinary photo. I try to share the best of the best. So it's always more practice makes better perfection and it's trial and error but regardless I always have a great time taking these photos walking around and capturing different moments whether it's something that's moving like a person or something stagnant like a fire hydrant either way I gave it life and captured it in that very moment now if you do like this video and want to see more from the steel city well I do have another video coming up which I'll be shooting tomorrow where it's gonna be more nature related more peaceful tranquil quiet setting but still in pittsburgh itself that video will be coming out after this one so make sure you're subscribed to the channel have your notifications turned on and lastly i'll see you behind the camera real soon thanks for watching